So what's going in your spray tank next? Hi, I'm Mark Cartwright. I'm the Pioneer Field Agronomist for Northeast North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota. Today I got Jordan Grunstrom with me. He's the Corteva Territory Manager for this district as well. We'd like to go through a few things uh, to wrap up here, uh, some of the herbicides for the growing season, and then get into some insecticides and fungicides. So Jordan, soybeans are getting into the R1 growth stage. Uh, they're full flower right, or they're early flower right now. Probably getting close to full flower with the flower being open on one of the top two nodes. Uh, what are some options that we still got in soybeans for herbicides? So with, with the Enlist system and the new label we had, you know, uh, prior to the 2022 new label, we were able to go up through R2 up to that R3 stop. Uh, with the new label that came out uh, in January this year, uh, we, we reined that back a little bit. Um, we're good through R1. We've got to have a hard stop at R2, and that's to align with the Liberty label, basically. So we do have some opportunities out there to get, get another shot of Enlist, Enlist Duo out on, on these soybeans. Um, you know, prominent weeds that we've been seeing in the area, ragweed, um, water hemp have really been, you know, the late planting and everything else, water hemp emerged early and emerged fast and it kept emerging. So we've seen some water hemp applications t that needed to have, that need to happen twice, uh, same with ragweed. So we still got that enlist um, trait and, and herbicide out there that we can still uh, apply. We got no hard stop on dates. We got just timing through the plant that we've got to, we got to stop at that hard uh, R2, at the end of R2. So, or through R1, excuse me, beginning of R2. Yeah, good. Now some guys are using the lay-by treatment and the really tough water hemp uh, fields and some really high pressure with uh, common ragweed as well. Give me your take on some of the advantage of putting a lay-by herbicide out there like metulachlor. Yeah, so absolutely, zespitalachlor type products, um, you know, basically what that does is it creates a, a barrier on the top of the soil. As the weed weeds uh, seedlings germinate throughout that, that soil profile, that nice layer of esmetallochlor stops that water hemp in its tracks. Uh, as long as we get a little quarter inch to half inch of moisture after that lay-by is applied in this tank, uh, we're seeing really great results with water hemp suppression and control uh, on later emerging water hemp species. So been a real nice product. Yeah, with those weeds emerging all the way through the growing season, uh, putting that lay-by down can be a really huge advantage in those troublesome fields. Uh, moving on to insects, you know, still a lot of grasshopper residuals can, kind of carrying over from last year. Uh, a lot of talk in the industry still about Corteva losing the lowers band label. Uh, give us your take on what are some great effective insecticide options for Corteva moving forward this growing season. Yeah, so basically with, with uh, the unfortunate news of the EPA pulling the label of Clopyrifos, um, we've come out with Ridgeback. Uh, Ridgeback is our newest insecticide that we've launched for 2022. Uh, what Ridgeback is, is it's a, a tank mech, it's a formulation combination of our Transform Isoclass and Bifenthrin, um, a pyrethroid type product. So that's what we're going to pick up the grasshopper control with this year in our portfolio. Um, Outside of the grass, so with the, with the isoclast and the transform, you've got the sap feeders like the aphids, so you're getting control there. And then with the bifenthrin that's part of the ridgeback, you're getting control of a spider mite chewing, um, grasshopper chew, you know, any of the insects that chew. So ridgeback is our insecticide moving forward for, for soybeans um, to combat those tough insects such as grasshoppers and spider mites. Um, we do have transform still, um, uh, just the single um, product for the aphids. Um, so if, you, if you're not worried about a grasshopper or spider mite out there, uh, Transform Insecticide is definitely your, your aphid type product to uh, combat those. So looking forward, you know, I see a lot of heavy moisture that we've had so far, high humidity, uh, temperatures are moving up. Look at white mold being probably one of our big fung funguses that we're going to combat moving forward. Uh, give us some options from Corteva Crop Protection in that regard. Yeah, so our, our top of the line product that we got for that market is, is called Approach. Uh, Approach is a uh, strobularian product. Um, really, really performs well on white mold when you compare it to the, the uh, premium products within the market. So uh, nine ounce use rate of Approach uh, at the R1 to R3. So you can throw it in with this last shot of uh, um, Enlist or, or Liberty or Glyphosate if you need to as you're going across the beans if you need to another time. Um, it does a real great job on, on suppressing and controlling white mold um, in soybeans. We've seen really good results as we've moved south in the uh, areas that have had Enlist longer. Um, another option to throw in there as well with the approach, if you're going to go across it, is uh, Utricia N. Utricia N is new to us this year. It's our uh, uh, nitrogen bio, uh, fixation biological product. Basically, it's a foliar-fed uh, biological um, that allows that plant to take an airborne N um, to uh, produce more nitrogen into the plant. So um, 
Mark's more uh, up to date on the, how the inoculant will carry you through till now. And then we got Utricia to help you with that nitrogen boost in this reproductive stages. Well, very good, Jordan. Thank you for your insight today. And I appreciate all your time. From Northeast North Dakota, this is Mark Cartwright, Pioneer Field Agronomist. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.